China says the Vietnamese fishing boat capsized after ramming a Chinese boat. Vietnam says 40 Chinese boats encircled and then rammed the Vietnamese boat. The standoff is part of China pushing back against a bigger U.S. presence in the Pacific, says American University professor Hillary Van Leverett. It really puts Vietnam in the forefront of the battle essentially between the U.S. and China over who's going to be able to exert influence today and for the long term in that critically important part of the world. It's a message that's meant for all of Beijing's territorial rivals, says New South Wales University professor Carl Thayer. And the core states of Asia, not just Philippines and Vietnam, are going to be highly concerned because it's not just an oil rig, it's the military muscle that goes with it, and every state will feel vulnerable to China. President Xi Jinping says China always works to resolve peacefully issues of maritime sovereignty and questions Asian nations that seek alliances against neighbors. Tianhua countries that strengthen military alliances against a third party do not benefit regional security. So what's going on here, big picture? Well, all this is residue of a weak U.S. foreign policy and a weak president. And now China is working with Russia to forge a working relationship. So, should we worry about that? Joining me now, investigative journalist and Daily Ledger contributor, Kimberly DeBoer. Kimberly, uh, the Obama administration will say, hey, don't worry about that relationship with Russia and China and these new deals that they're forging. Uh, not to worry, uh, we're still in control. Bottom line is, though, I think America should worry about that relationship. Yeah, they actually should. And a great example is the recent $400 billion deal that Mr. Putin traveled over to China to get. They reached the agreement. He came home with something. And if we look back in April, just a few short weeks ago, President Obama made his own Asian swing trip looking to negotiate a coveted 12-country free trade agreement. He came home empty-handed. And as a result of that, um, and all of this new, um, you know, stuff going on in the um, South Asian seas, we're seeing Japan for the first time since the Second World War try to change their constitution so they can begin arming themselves in case they're going to have to protect themselves against a, a China or other countries like maybe even Russia might have some sort of interest moving forward. That's precedent, having Japan not rely on the United States for defense. They are actually going through the process of changing their constitution that needs to be highlighted here because that shows how weak our foreign policy is currently. And I think they're doing the right thing uh, for their own, to protect their own national sovereignty. Yeah. You know, of course, the Obama administration tries to argue to us, the American people, that Russia is just a regional power. Clearly, it is more than just a regional power. And China, on the other hand, it, it seems as though they're uh, embarking on a systematic uh, way of trying to attack the United States, if you will, without using weaponry, but they're doing it in a whole host of other ways. Yeah, I think actually what you can look at, and a lot of experts in this uh, field are saying that China is preparing for an economic war, so you're not necessarily going to see bombs drop from the sky, you're going to see them use monetary um, different, you know, they hold two and a half trillion of our debt over there. They they actually have a couple trillion dollars in cash reserves where we're 17 trillion in debt. We see them moving forward and building another Panama Canal-like um, canal in, through Nicaragua. They got the rights for that. They've been in Africa all over. They own 95% of the world's minerals and resources. You know, the United States has fought over in the Middle East for now going on to 13 years. And even if China was to like dump all of our, the debt that we owe them, they would still be out front and it would be less costly for them to do such than it did cost for us just to fight the Iraqi war. Yeah, I mean, when you look at it in those terms, they, it's a, almost a win-win for them. Whether they'll follow through with it or not, we're not certain, but they are slowly but surely edging to towards an economic war. And you have to ask why. You know, why is China all of a sudden seizing this opportunity? And maybe it's not all of a sudden. Maybe it's been going on for a long time. But certainly they've ramped up recently. And I think the answer is because they see weakness in the United States. They see disarray uh, internally and externally. They see all that debt that the United States has. They see an open border. They see a national defense that's being gutted by this president. And oh, by the way, a president who is weak. 
Yeah, I think that also when you look at China, and I mean, if, if you study history in this, they, they look at life in a long view. They're not right. looking at a five-year period here. They're looking 20, 30, 40 years down the road. And by doing that, they know that they can systematically, through small little movements, they can chart their path to, be, to gain the, the you know, world dominance that they seek and that they once held. So they see the, the West as weak. They see us as, you know, addicted to cheap labor. We want flat screen TVs, right. and China's more than happy to provide that cheap labor for us. But on the other side, they also see that we really don't have any kind of plan moving forward. We're operating one scandal to the next currently, and we're operating on the defensive for absolute everything from energy to warfare to foreign policy. Every front you look at, the United States is reacting, and China is going to fill that void. Real quick, uh, only a few seconds left, uh, right down to supplying Mexican drug cartels with chemicals so they can make methamphetamine so it can be sold on the streets of the United States. So, uh, I mean, these are very insidious little things that they're doing, but you start adding all this up and you start to see the picture yeah absolutely and i think by you know allowing the chemicals to pass through the united states and go by rail down to mexico um you're actually seeing them go through the process of dumbing down our society by giving us so many drugs we have a huge drug problem in this country and you know they're they're happy to help that along because that gives them the long-term view that they need yeah. their people are we're, we're dumbed down and they're yeah. they're preparing for a world dominance they're looking at this president laughing they're looking at uh, legalized marijuana and laughing yeah. even harder and they're also seeing an opportunity a vulnerability there kimberly Absolutely. thanks for all that thank you going to next stop tape why the first lady is